ഹിമ <تصفيق> واللعن على اعدائهم من الان الى ابد الابدين فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ان الذين كذبوا باياتنا واستكبروا عنها لا تفتح لهم ابواب السماء ولا يدخلون الجنه ولا يدخلون الجنه حتى يلج الجمل في سم الخياط وكذلك نجز المجرمين لهم من جهنم مهاد ومن فوقهم غواش وكذلك نجز الظالمين صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وال محمد وعجل فرجهم الشريف اللهم كن لوليك الحجه ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى ابائه في هذه الساعه وفي كل ساعه وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه ارضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا اللهم صل على محمد وال محمد وعجل فرجهم الشريف Greetings of peace السلام عليكم ايها المؤمنون والمؤمنات ورحمه الله تعالى وبركاته يا علي مدد We are going to continue our discussion in regards to Aisha and the verses of Quran that are pertinent to her and we are going to base our discussion on Omri sources as we want to address the Omri audience. However, before I continue further with this subject, there is an important issue that I need to explain. When we speak about Abi Bakr and Omar and Uthman and Aisha and other important personalities that the Omri congregation Uh, events great admiration and respect towards them and we bring forth plethora of evidence and proofs and undeniable arguments from their own books that these individuals are not as holy as the Omri congregation would claim rather these individuals characters are stained with ignorance with oppression with sins and with debauchery and with the pravity that's not becoming to any muslim let alone to the imams of the muslims when we bring this uh, mountain of evidence this undeniable clear evidence from their own books that proves to them that abu bakr and omar and uthman and all these individuals were not as great heroes as they thought they were what reaction do we see from the omri scholar the omri scholar has two choices either he accepts the shia arguments and that would mean that his madhhab has been invalid and has been a blasphemy and a defiance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from day one that they cannot do or they have to come forward and bring counter arguments to reject our points to reject our proofs and that is not possible for them either so what do they do they have to save face 
before their audience, before the world, before uh, the other people. If it's possible for them to, obviously throughout history, to silence the Shia speaker through, through the sword, through murder, to, through violence, they will resort to that, obviously. If that's not possible for them as in our age, in, in many occasions it's possible for them, but in certain occasions it's not immediately possible for them. It's not that easy. So, what is the response? They would say, to save face, they were, they were, their, their response is that this person is insulting the Sahaba. He has been using profane language. He has been using obscene language to Sahaba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with Sahaba. He has declared that all of them will go to Jannah and this person, he is talking against Sahaba. He is calling them that they deserve the fire of hell. He has been, used, he has been blaspheming. He has been insulting. He has been using foul language towards the companion of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, we are not going to talk to him. He is not worthy of our conversation. We are going to to simply ignore him and he does not have knowledge either so accuse the opposing party of being of being uh, profane of not being worthy of conversation and or being ignorant or having psychological issues that is their uh, approach they would take and it's very common that we see today this is the same approach the kuffar of Quraysh took with respect to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he brought his divine message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam declared his uh, nubuwah in his risalah and that he is the messenger of Allah. Salamullahi alayhi wa ala itratih. Uh, the people of Mecca were mostly idol worshippers. So, uh, so they saw the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has come with a new religion that he declared all their gods all their idols to be false, to be fake, to be worthy of nothing, to be trash. They, has, they have to be thrown away. They are trash, nothing more. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with a very rational, very logical uh, pr uh, message that he would argue that you made these gods from the stones, from, from clay or from wood. You carved these idols. And these idols cannot... Uh, push away any harm from themselves. How could they benefit you or take away any harm from you? How do you expect something that, that does not answer to you is not living? How do you expect it to be all-powerful and almighty and worthy of your devotion, worthy of your humility and worthy of your worship? The message was very rational and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called him to the deen of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa sallam, to the deen, to the religion, to the Allah of Ibrahim and Ishaq and Ismail, that the Arabs knew that they were true prophets of Allah through messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with a Quran that every verse thereof, every surah thereof was so miraculous that the Arabs could not, could not bring a simple line that like the lines of the Holy Quran. The Arabs, although they were very eloquent and they're very well versed in Arabic eloquence, in Arabic prose, in Arabic poetry, nonetheless when they heard the Quran and listened to the Holy Quran, from the uh, voice of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam, they were mesmerized by its beauty, by its, by its eloquence, by its wisdom. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had a such upright character, infallible, he was kind, he was well-mannered, he was always truthful, he was so reliable that he was called Amin even before he declared his prophethood, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They all knew him, they, know, they knew his family, they knew, they knew his forefathers, that his family is such a respectable and honorable family. And they knew that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had never ever in his life ever claimed something that was not true, never uttered a lie in his life. So they knew the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not wrong. They knew. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam displayed so many miracles other than the Holy Quran. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would take a handful of pebbles, rocks, and these rocks would 
uh, say the tasbih and glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the rocks, people would hear that. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would signal to a palm tree. The palm tree would tear the earth and come to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and declare that he is the Nabi of Allah and there is no other God except his deity and his Allah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, animals, uh, wolves or, and uh, camels, people saw that they would talk to him and address him and testify to his nubuwa and testify to his risala. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pointed towards the, the moon and the moon is split into two and then it came back together. So many miracles the people of Mecca saw. Like the Qawm of Bani Israel and the Qawm of Fir'aun, the nation that followed Fir'aun, they saw that Musa alayhi wa nabi wa alayhi salam has so many miracles. He dropped his stick and it became a huge serpent. It, and this huge serpent, it swallowed all the uh, magicians and their tricks and their the sorcerers, whatever they had, and they had come up with. And, the, uh, and they saw that Musa ala Nabi wa alayhi salam, when he takes out his hand, his hand is shining. If it's nighttime, it becomes bright because his hand is so bright. Our Musa ala Nabi wa alayhi salam, uh, signaled with or struck with his uh, with his stick to the river and the river split 12, 12 pathways for the 12 tribes to pass through and Banu Israel knew that he is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nonetheless they always asked him to make him make make idols for them for Bani Israel not only the people of Fir'aun who who did not believe in Musa ala Nabi wa alayhi salam anyways and who were destroyed but also Banu Israel, the children of, uh, of uh, Ishaq alayhi salam. Anyways, people saw all these miracles and they knew the person who has brought these miracles, he is truthful and he has an upright character. And what he says is very rational, makes sense and touches the heart. Nonetheless, they did not want to accept his message. The people of Quraysh likewise. They said that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is crazy. He has psychological issues. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has gone mad. Or he is a shair. He just, he's saying things he does not mean. He's just a poet. Or the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has very bad manners. That he is uh, swearing at their gods. That he is being profane to their gods, to their deities, to their forefathers. He's calling their gods void and invalid. This is the Tafsir of Qummi, Ali ibn Ibrahim Qummi, a Shia Tafsir. Let me read to you this narration. Tafsir Ali ibn Ibrahim Qummi, he is one of the teachers of uh, Kulaini, rahimahullah, the author of Al Kafi. This is the first volume published by Alami Foundation in Beirut at the year 1412, 1991. And Beirut. In the Tafsir of Surah Al Hajr, page number 381. The Quraysh, after the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam declared that he is the messenger of Allah. He has come with a new deen, the new set of laws, with a new way of life for mankind until the day of judgment. And Allah has truly sent him and Quraysh knew that he was rightful, that he is truthful. Nonetheless, they did not want to accept his message. Until last day, they did not accept his message. They came to Abu Talib alayhi salam. Ya Abu Talib, inna ibn akhika qad saffaha ahlamana wa sabba alihatana. O Abu Talib, your nephew, Abu Talib ala nabina wa alihi wa alayhi salam. Salamullahi ala Abi Talib. He was like a father to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. He raised the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi salam from the time that he was an infant. From the time that he is from the from the time that he was born. Because when he was born, Abdul Muttalib alayhi salatu was almost very old and Abdullah alayhi salam had passed away. And Abdul Muttalib alayhi salam gave uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi to Hazrat Abu Talib alayhi salam's care. So he was like a father. He raised the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa Quraysh came to Abi Talib. Inna ibn akhika qad saffaha ahlamana. Your nephew. He has declared that we are irrational, that we are fools because we are worshipping these gods, these idols. 
your nephew has declared us to be fools, to be uh, irrational. Our way of life is, is irrational, our way of worship is irrational. And this is important, my dear viewers. And your nephew has profaned our deities. He has blasphemed our deities. He has used foul language in regard to our gods. He has, in other words, he has insulted the Sahaba. He has insulted the gods. Insulted. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam could never ever use inappropriate words. I'm not saying that he, must, he might not have used harsh words with respect to the deities. I do not know his exact words. Because all, all the things the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa has said has not been narrated. Nonetheless, whatever he said, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even if they were harsh, they were appropriate. They must have been appropriate with respect to those gods. We as Muslims believe that. Why? Because the Holy Quran says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa innaka la'ala khuluqin azim. Verily, you have such high and such great way of, uh, of conducting yourself. Khuluq, your manners, your way of conducting yourself. Yourself is so great, so immensely correct and so immensely admirable. وَلَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَعَلَيْهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ For the whole mankind. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a, an excellent, a beautiful role model for you to emulate, to copy, to perform like he has performed. Anyways, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was accused of having, of using bad words with respect to the deities of Quraysh. And causing this unity, of course, that one also. <laughs> he has corrupted our youth. And he has caused this unity. We want to be one. We, the people of Mecca, want to be united. We want to be one, brothers and sisters. This man, he has come with this message. Abu Talib, alayhi salam. Oh, Abu Talib, listen to us. He is causing this unity. He is causing fitna. He is causing what he is doing is going to cause bloodshed amongst us. This was the message, this was the response of the Quraysh to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his message. Obviously, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not profane. Of course. And whatever words that he used, that he used for uh, the idols of Quraysh, they were appropriate. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not cause disunity. The Nabi, who caused disunity were the people of Quraysh because they did not accept a very reasonable the blessing of Allah, light of Allah, the way of Allah, to be blessed in this life and the hereafter. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has brought to them the sa'adah, the bliss of this life and the hereafter, and they do not accept that. And they are the ones who resort to violence against the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They conspired to kill him in the year 13 from his declaration of uh, Risalah. The kuffar of Quraysh conspired to kill him. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, migrated to Medina, not because Medina has a, has a better climate or anything else. Because he would have been killed if he had stayed in Mecca. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left Medi Mecca because he had no choice. He, he would have been either killed in Mecca or he had to migrate and flee the kuffar of Quraysh to Medina. So they were the ones who were being fooled. They were the ones who were being violent. They were the ones who were being biased and not accepting a very rational message, a very true message, a very evidently true message from uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and they were accusing the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of being profane, of being blasphemous, of being, uh, uh, of causing disunity and of... Uh, uh, insulting them and their gods. The same issue has been narrated, my viewers, by Al Tabari. This is the history of Tabari. Tariq Al Tabari. المعروف بتاريخ الأمم والملوك the most famous and authentic and reliable book of history 
uh, before the Sunni congregation. Second volume published by A'lami Foundation in Beirut at the year 1418. When the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam declared that he is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those events, page 236. Kufar of Quraysh, Abu al-Bakhd, Masha rajulun min ashraf Quraysh ila Abi Talib. Some men from the nobility of Quraysh went to Abi Talib alayhi salam. Utba ibn Rabi'ah, wa Shayba ibn Rabi'ah, wa Abu al-Bakhtari ibn Hisham, wa al-Aswad ibn al-Muttalib, wa al-Walid ibn al-Mughira, wa Abu Jahl ibn Hisham, wa al-Aas ibn Ba'il, wa Nabih wa Munabbah ibn al-Hajjaj, wa man masha ilayhi minhum. The chiefs of Quraysh, the chiefs of idol worshippers, they came to Abi Talib alayhi salam to complain, to file their complaint against his nephew, our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What, what, what they say? إِنَّ ابْنَ أَخِيكَ يَا أَبَا طَالِبْ O Abi Talib, سلام الله عليه إِنَّ ابْنَ أَخِيكَ Your nephew verily قَدْ سَبَّ آلِهَتَنَا He has insulted. He has insulted our gods. Oh, He has insulted our gods. وَعَابَ دِينَنَا He has blasphemed our religion. He has declared that our religion is void, invalid, not true. He has declared that we are not being rational, that we are not following a reasonable path. He has declared that our forefathers, their way of worshipping, their way of religion has been wrong and they have been ignorant. But, and then they declared that either you stop him or you let us stop your nephew. And then uh, Tabari narrates on other uh, accounts also on the account of other narrators. Same thing. They came, but anta kuffa an shat mi ali hatihim wa yadouka wa ilahaka. Bali. Fal ya kuffa an shat mi ali hatina wa nadahu wa ilah. They came to Abu Talib alayhi salam and said, Ya Abu Talib, anta kabiruna wa sayyiduna. Ya Abu Talib, you are our elderly. You are our elder and you are our leader. And you are our master. Fansifna min ibn akhi. You uh, be fair between us and your nephew. فَمُرْهُ فَلْيَكُفَّ عَنْ شَتْمِ آلِهَتِنَا Ask him to refrain from insulting our gods and using profanity with respect to our gods. وَنَدَعَهُ وَإِلَاهَ And we will leave him alone with his God. Important thing. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with uh, irrefutable proofs, with signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with miracles, a message that made sense, that was so rational, that was undeniable. The kuffar of Quraysh, they were being uh, unfair. They were being, they were, they were biased towards their own religion. They wanted to follow what they had been following. They did not want to accept the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa and his message. Therefore, and they did not have any rational explanation for their behavior, how to reject this new message. They did not know any reasonable way how to justify not accepting the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what was the easy way for them? Ah, the easy way was for them to accuse the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of causing disunity, to accuse the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of being profane and blasphemous, to accuse the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he's insulting our gods, our forefathers, our religion, and to accuse the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he is misleading the youth, misleading, causing fitna amongst people. Or they came up with other stories that he is a poet, that he has gone crazy, and all those are uh, in the verses of Quran. Anyways, my viewers, every Muslim has a right. No, he doesn't have a right. Every Muslim has an obligation to learn the history of Islam, to learn about Islam. And to know what happened in Islamic history. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not bring uh, 73 sects. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi brought from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only one way to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one way uh, to the Muslims should conduct themselves. One sharia he brought, not various different uh, sects, opposing sects. So, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself has declared that all my ummah will be divided into 73 sects and all of them would go into Jahannam except one sect. 
And let me show you this from the book of Sunani Abi Dawood. Sunani Abi Dawood. Authored by Abu Dawood Sulaiman ibn al Ashat al Sajistani. This book is published by Darul Fikr in Beirut, Lebanon, at the year 1425. Kitab al Sunnah, page number 860, uh, hadith number 4597. He narrates Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. He himself narrates the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Gave a speech, he gave a sermon. Ala in man kablakum in ahlil kitab if taraku alath nataina was sabaina mila. Beware that before you, the followers of Torah and Evangel, the ahlil kitab, the people of the book, they were divided into 73 nations, into 73 religions. Mila is a religion, into 73 religions, pathways. وَإِنَّ هَذِهِ الْمِلَّةَ سَتَفْتَرِقُ عَلَىٰ ثَلَاثَ وَسَبْعِينَ And this religion would divide into 73 denominations, into 73 subsects. إِثْنَتَانَ وَسَبْعُونَ فِي النَّارِ وَوَاحِدَةٌ فِي الْجَنَّةِ 72 thereof. Out of 73, 72 would be condemned into torment of hell. They will go into fire of Jahannam. There will be no difference between them and the idol worshippers. They will go into fire of hell. وَوَاحِدَةٌ فِي الْجَنَّةِ And only one denomination, only one sect from the Muslims, they will go into Jannah. وَهِيَ الْجَمَعَ And that is the blessed congregation, that is the blessed group of people, masses of people that you have to adhere to. Therefore, it's the right of every Muslim to know the history of Islam and how, uh, what happened in the history of Islam. So, and that's the only way we would know Amongst all these different denominations, which denomination to follow so we do not end up in the fire of hell? Just being Muslim is not sufficient against uh, the fire of hell. The fire of hell, it will not provide us any protection against Allah's chastisement on the day of judgment. Just being Muslim. Um, there are so many different kinds of Islam. So many different kinds of Islam. In all these various forms of Islam, there is no difference between them and those people who are worshipping idols, they all, all end up in the same place. Only one denomination will be blessed to go into paradise and to be happy forever and ever and ever. And that is the denomination that we have to find. And that we cannot find in any other way except through research and through understanding and through reading. And that is so simple and that's not difficult. If you pay attention, if you be sensible, and if you leave your biases aside, that's easily done. And this, this is not possible to study the history of Islam and to explain the history of Islam to our audience without being truthful, without pre presenting the facts as they are. And if, uh, if of my opponents, if the opposing factions, they, want, they do not want us to disclose, they do not want us, want us to reveal what's in their books, because they call this profanity, they call this using foul language. It's, we know the real reasons behind this. This is the real reason behind this is that these matters are true. They cannot deny it and they cannot reject these, issues, these proofs. Therefore, they resort to this very cowardly and this very, uh, very silly uh, way to reject us by accusing us of being profane, by accusing us to be blasphemous, by accusing us to you be using foul language with respect to their admirable personalities. And we will study the history of Islam and the history of Islam if it indicate to us that a certain person was a bad person. He was, he committed things, he did things that makes him a very, very bad person. It's our right. No, it's our obligation to know that and the, to tell ourselves and tell our kids and tell our communities that the conclusion of our research based on all of this evidence indicate that such a person is not worthy of your respect. And he was indeed a person who caused so much transgression and oppression and ignorance in the history of Islam. And this goes about most Sahaba, about, about most 
companions of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa wasallam. And if any Shia scholar or Umri scholar is not happy with this, then it's their own problem. They have some, some uh, reasons because of which they want us to be silent. And we are not going to be silent. We have to defend our faith. We, have to, we cannot forget, ever forget what happened to Imam Hussein alayhi salam in Karbala. We will never forget what happened to Zahra sallallahu alayhi after the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We will never forget how Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu was salam was treated after the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away. And we do, not, we do not have any respect for those criminals who committed all these crimes and who uh, founded this, this chain of events that even today, because of which people are killed, people are murdered, people are slaughtered everywhere in the world. We cannot forget that until we, we correct this chain of events from the top, from the beginning, and recognize that those individuals, individuals are not worthy of following this chain of events of debauchery and killing and murder and massacre and loot and rape, it will continue. New ISSs will come, new Taliban will be born in every century, in every age. We have to explain to our people. And this is possible. This is something doable. If the Shia ulama do not betray the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam if the Shia youth do not follow the corrupt ulama who are betraying Ahlul Bayt alayhim salatu wassalam, if the Shia youth support Ahlul Bayt alayhim salatu wassalam and present the events of Islam, the true face of Islam to the world and to the other Muslim communities and to the Omri communities, so they know, so they know. What, what, how was Iran during the time of al lama al-Hilli? How was Iraq during the time of al-Muhaqqiq al-Tusi? Shias were a small minority, very small minority. Today, Iraq is a Shia majority country. Likewise, Iran is a Shia majority country. Why? Because scholars, al Alam al hilli he devoted himself, al muhaqqiq al tusi and the scholars after them, they devoted themselves to explaining the, the issues correctly and uh, not hide, unless it was necessary, not hide facts unless it was truly necessary in a certain situation. Those situations are exceptions. It's not the course that always has to be upheld. Thank you so much for watching me. Inshallah, tabaraka wa ta'ala. I hope that this campaign that, that certain individuals and Shia scholars, because they want to be leaders of the world, at least they want to be the leader of the Islamic world. And they, they will not be the leaders of Islamic world if the Umaris think that the Shia do not like Abu Bakr and Omar. Therefore, they want the Shia to compromise their faith, their Iman, so they could become the Wali Amr al-Muslimin. They could become the leader, caretaker of Muslims. No, we are not going to compromise in our faith. We are not going to hide facts from our children. We are not going to fight, hide facts from the world. We are not going to betray Zahra Salamullahi alayhi. We are not going to betray Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wassalam. We are not going to betray the Imam of the age, Ajallahu Ta'ala, Farajahu Sharif. We are going to defend this faith. We are going to defend the Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salatu wassalam. And only Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam, our Imams. Nobody else is my Imam. Nobody else is my Caliph. I don't care how big is his turban. No Alim can ever convince me that I have to compromise my faith. That I have to be soft against the enemies of Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salatu wassalam. If any of them... If any one of them thinks that he's man enough, he has knowledge, he can prove that my method and my uh, way of presenting facts is against the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salatu wassalam, I ask them I, to come forward and talk to me. This is the book of Al-Ihtijaj of Tabarsi, rahimahullahu ta'ala. Uh, authored by Abu Mansur Ahmad ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib al-Tabarsi, one of the most important and uh, critical Shia books. Volume 1, published by Uswa Publications in Qum, Iran. In this book, there are several narrations at the beginning of this book. 
in the beginning of this book. And he mentions his Sanad to this book. He narrates from Al-Imam Al-Hasan Al-Askari alayhi salatu was salam, a number of narrations with the same Isnad in the beginning. Said our Imam, Al-Imam Abu Muhammad, Al-Imam Al-Hasan Al-Askari, the 11th Imam, salamu Allah alayhi, that my uh, forefather, Ja'far ibn Muhammad alayhi salam, said, Man kana hammuhu fi kasr nawasib an al-masakina min shi'atina, whoever he is dedicated and devoted to defeat the nawasib, to break and to smash the nawasib, kasr nawasib, smash the nawasib, an al-masakina min shi'atina, whoever is devoted and has its purpose, he 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 endeavors towards this end to smash the Nawasib away from the Masakin min Shi'atina, from our poor Shia, from our Shia who are not very informed about their religion, about their deen, about the history of Islam. Al-Muwalina hamiyatan lana ahl al-bayt min Shi'atina al-Muwalin, those Shia who love us and he smashes those Nawasib away from our Shia Hamiyatan lana ahl al-bayt because he wants to, he has honor, he has ghayra, he wants, he, he, he has this strong urge and zeal in himself. He wants to defend ahl al-bayt alayhim as salatu was salam. Yaksiruhum anhum wa yakshifu an makhazihim. Such person smashes them away, smashes the nawasib away from the Shia. Wa yakshifu an makhazihim and discloses their their humiliating facts, disclosing their humiliating facts. He comes and reveals facts about Abu Bakr, about Omar, about Nawasib that humiliates them, that puts them in shame. And he comes and he discloses their private parts. Aura is the private part. However, this here is. Um, it indicates humiliating facts, facts that would make Nawasib ashamed of themselves. If such a person comes in order to smash the Nawasib, he may come here, I tell you who is Aisha, who is Abu Bakr, who is Omar. He discloses the facts from their books. And such a person comes and smashes the Nawasib the enemies of Ahlul Bayt alayhim as salatu was salam and then glorifies Muhammad Ali Muhammad alayhim as salatu was salam exalts Muhammad Ali Muhammad alayhim as salatu was salam and introduces to people the fadail the excellent virtues of Ahlul Bayt alayhim as salatu was salam ja'ala Allah ta'ala himmata amlak al jinan fi bina'i qusurihi wa durihi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the angels in paradise in jannah to construct for him castles, construct for him houses and residences in paradise. يَسْتَعْمِلُوا بِكُلِّ حَرْفٍ مِنْ حُرُوفِ حُجَجِهِ عَلَىٰ أَعْدَاءِ اللَّهِ أَكْثَرَ مِنْ عَدَدِ أَهْلِ الدُّنْيَا أَمْلَاكَ in, in proportion to every letter, not every word, every letter that this person uses in this life to smash the nawasib, to glorify Ahlul Bayt alayhim as salatu was salam in proportion to every letter, not every word, every letter of his speech to build a residence, build a castle for him in Jannah. Bali. Quwwatu kulli wah bali. Akthara min adadi ahlul dunya amlaka. Not a castle. For every letter, for every letter, build castles more than properties in this world, subhanAllah. <laughs> this is unimaginable. Each angel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands to construct for this person, each angel has more powerful, is not equal to, no, more powerful than to carry the heavens and the earth. Such giant angels. فَكَمْ مِنْ بِنَا وَكَمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ then Imam alayhi salam said, so much uh, construction for him, so many residences, castles for him. 
so many palaces for this person in Jannah. وَكَمْ مِنْ نَعْمَةٍ And so many, so abundant blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَكَمْ مِنْ قُصُورٍ So many palaces and castles for him. لَا يَعْرِفُ قَدْرَهَا إِلَّا رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ the number of these castles, the, the multitude and plurality of these blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, nobody knows them except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَالَ أَبُو مُحَمَّدٍ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ Al-Imam, Al-Imam, Al-Hasan Al-Askari alayhi salam said, قَالَ عَلِي بْنُ مُوسَ الرِّضَى My master, my Imam. The Shia's master, the universe's master, Al Imam Al Rida alayhi salam, Ruh ilahu al Fidah said, Avdalu ma yukadimu al Alimu min muhibina, wa mawalina amamahu al Yom Fakrihi wa Fakati wa Zulihi wa Maskanatih. The best thing, the best thing an Alim from, from the Shia ulama prepares for his day of judgment. That day when he will be poor, when he will be hungry, will he be, when he will be lonely, and he will be uh, re without any resources, the day of judgment. The best thing Shia Alim can do for such a day. The best thing he can do to prepare for the day of judgment for Alim is to help a Shia, to help Yurif, to help to come to the help of a Shia in this world. Miskinan min muhibbina. A Shia who is, who is not very knowledgeable in religion. A Shia who is poor in religion. Not well informed in religion. To help him. To help him. Min yadi nasibin adun lillah wa li rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To help him. To extricate him. To untangle him from the hands of a nasibi. Anasibi, that's it, the enemy of Allah, enemy of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And who is Nasibi? Anybody. So many Nawasib and Shia wardrobe. So many Nawasib and Shia wardrobe. Nasibi is not just Ibn Taymiyyah, Ummah TV channel and Takbir TV channel. Oh, so many there are Nawasib. Anybody who betrays Ahlul Bayt alayhi salatu wa salam knowingly. Who know that if I say this, if I do this, this will misguide people, this will hide Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salatu wa salam's wilaya in his imama, in his khilafa. If I do this, if I say this thing, for instance, it will protect the enemies of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salatu wa salam. For instance, if I say that please do not mention the bad things about Aisha, about Abu Bakr, about Omar, of course. This, if I, if I, if I, if I hide myself, my, my, I myself hide facts about Abu Bakr and Omar, and encourage others to hide these things about Abu Bakr and Omar, and anybody who says something, accuse him of being the Mossad agent, and uh, anybody who says discloses facts about Abu Bakr and Omar and Aisha, accusing of being fasiq, of being, uh, of being, uh, of being. Uh, Blasphemous of being profane with respect to Abi Bakr and Omar and Aisha. Anybody who says that, of course, of course he's a Nasibi. Of course he's a Nasibi. He's protecting the enemies of Ahlul Bayt alayhim as salatu was salam. And taqiyya is not always wajib. Taqiyya is not always obligatory. And in certain instances, taqiyya becomes haram. Taqiyya becomes haram right now, if in this, right now, in our conditions, right now, today. If you say we are going to deny that we do la'an of Aisha, of Abu Bakr and Omar, or we do not consider Abu Bakr and Omar to be bad characters, the Omaris are not going to believe you. Nobody is going to believe you. You are just fooling yourself. The world knows that the Shia do not, does not consider Abu Bakr and Omar good characters. Therefore, we have no choice, no choice, because we are facing takfir. We are being called kafir because we consider Abu Bakr and Omar of bad characters, of negative characters. Such a situation, if we deny that we are ca calling them bad people, it will only strengthen the takfiri's arguments. The only correct response to takfir is to bring forth the Shia arguments. 
to say that yes, because hiding and denying that we use, or that we have a negative uh, belief with respect to Abu Bakr and Omar is not, is not serving anybody. It's, it doesn't serve any purpose and nobody will believe us. Therefore, in this situation, we have no, no other choice but to present our, our, the correct and valid Shia point of view that yes, these people were bad people and we can prove that from Quran, from Bukhari, from Muslim, from Tirmidhi, from Nisa'i, Musnad Ahmad. So the Imam alayhi salatu wasalam said that the best thing a Shia alim can do to prepare for his day of judgment is to help a Shia from min yadi nasibin adumin lillahu wa rasuli a nasibi whether this nasibi is in a Shia form or Umari form any, any person whose actions are against Ahlul Bayt alayhi salatu wasalam he knows that that he is fighting Ahlul Bayt alayhi wasalam. Whether his name is Ali, his name is Omar, doesn't make any difference. He's Nasibi. To extricate our Shia from the, from the hands of a Nasibi, a Nasibi who is the enemy of Allah and Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Such an alim yaqumu min qabrihi wal malaikatu sufufun min shafir qabrihi ila mawdi'i mahallihi min jinanillah. When he gets up, he stands up from his grave on the day of judgment. Malaika, the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would line up in his respect to receive him and to accompany him from the, from the uh, line of his grave all the way to the doorway of Jannah, the doorway of paradise. Malaika or sufuf, lines of malaika to respect him, to receive him and to accompany him. فَيَحْمِلُونَهُ عَلَىٰ أَجْنِحَتِهِمْ Malaika would lay their, their, their feathers, their, their um, wings under his feet to show humility and respect for him and carry him over, his, over their wings. يَقُولُونَ مَرْحَبًا طُوبَاكَ طُوبَاكَ Malaika say to him, مَرْحَبَا مَرْحَبَا Well done, well done, طُوبَا بَلِ طُوبَا is a... Is a, is a tree in paradise in the house of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. Shajarat al tuba is a, is a tree that it's in the house of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wa salam in paradise. Tuba laka, tuba. The tree of tuba, its fruits, its shade is awaiting you. Subhanallah. Huh? It's awaiting you. Ya dafi al kilabi. Anil Abrar, the Fi'al Kilab, oh, the person who chased away dogs, dogs from the Shia of Amir al Mu'minin. You are the, that Mujahid, you are that scholar who chased away dogs. You chased away those dogs, Nawasib dogs. Ya da Fi'al Kilab, oh, person who chased away the dogs, Anil Abrar, from the rightful congregation. You are the one who chased away dogs from. The rightful congregation. وَأَيَّهَا الْمُتَعَصِّبُ لِلْأَيْمَةِ الْأَخْيَارِ المتعصب, التعصب is to be biased. To be biased. You were so biased for the A'imma alayhim wasalam. Good for you. وَأَيُّهَا المتعصب, Oh, person who were biased, who would get angry, who would feel the zeal to, to defend A'imma alayhim wasalam. You are so mutaassib, you are so biased, you are so beautiful. You are, you are mutaassib, you are biased for good, you are biased for the defense of A'imma alayhim as salatu was salam. And so many other narrations like this and other books, Al-Kafi and other books. So therefore, inshaAllah tabaraka wa ta'ala, we have no choice, no choice, but to present the facts as they are in a very uh, uh, scholarly manner, providing proofs. We do, not, we do not claim anything that we cannot prove. We will bring forth, inshallah, wa ta'ala, proofs from the books of the opposing faction, and inshallah, prove everything, because we live in a time that we are facing onslaught, ideological onslaught from the Umaris all over the globe, 
And it's the Shia scholar's responsibility and their obligation from Allah and Ahlul Bayt alayhim salatu wasalam to defend Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. And you know, my viewers, that the majority of Shia ulama, from their maraji' to their uh, speakers and the members, they do not do that. They they defend the maraji'iyah, they defend the Hawza, they defend the Iranian government, they defend Iranian politics. But who is defending Ahlul Bayt alayhim salatu wasalam? Very few. In an effective manner, who is defending? Who is defending Ahlul Bayt alayhim salatu wasalam? Very few. Very few. Those are the chosen ones. Those are the good ones. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma kulli waliyyika al-hujjat ibn al-hasan. Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih fi hadhi al-sa'ah wa fi kulli sa'ah. وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد يا علي مداد